Hi, welcome to the MiMi Bass series. In this series, I will bore you with some interesting facts about some of the basses or bass related, audio related stuff I own. I will tell you uh, how it purchases them and why. Further, I will tell you my humble opinion about their playability and their sound. This time's up, a very interesting bass you don't see an awful lot. The Squire HMV from uh, Five String from 1989. This bass is made in Korea, or they say it's assembled with Japanese parts in Korea. Uh, it has gothic style, gotho styled tuners. The neck is maple with a rosewood fretboard. The precision marks are white dots. The body is a big question mark, but it's presumed that it's ply. The bridge is some sort of high mass bridge, and the pickups is, uh, are in a precision jazz configuration in an EMG style. Why did I buy this bass? Well, in fact, I didn't buy it. Uh, I swapped this bass for the Red Sub Fan Fretted Multiscale 4 String Bass, which I already uh, reviewed a couple of months back. This guy approached me if I was interested in, uh, in a swap, uh, as the Red Sub was for sale at that point. Uh, as I am always interested in a swap, if it's an interesting bass, of course. I agreed. But first, what I could find about these Squire H&M bases. Well, I can tell you there's almost none information to be found about these bases. What I do know is that in uh, the uh, late uh, 80s, the production of Squire bases moved to Korea. Uh, as we all know, uh, or not, Squire bases are in fact cheaper made copies of Fender bases. And Fender owns Squire, just in case you didn't know. But now, at the same time, uh, they introduced a Squire-only series called H&M, which stands for Heavy Metal. I guess they wanted to keep up with the competitors at that moment uh, and uh, also started to produce pointy, pointed headstock guitar and basses. It wasn't really a big success. After three years, they already stopped the production of these. Also, they moved the production back to Japan for a short while after this. Uh, my Precision Silver Series is one of those bases. Uh, after that, they moved the production to Indonesia and China and squeezed India in there as well for a very short time. Okay, about this bass, here is a small example how it sounds. First the bass solo and then the bass in context with drums and guitar.
the signal flow in this clip was the bass direct into a UED Apollo Twin, uh, which had an MPEG SVT simulation running on it. I used the Rock A preset. I read on a couple of posts that the low B string on this bass couldn't keep up with the wrist. Well, I didn't notice it at all. I had the pickup moved somewhat higher and the problem was solved. Uh, it just sounds great. It looks really 80s, but I don't really mind. Back in the day, I had a BC Rich Warlock. That one makes this bass look like a regular one, almost. I do must say, I see a resemblance body-wise uh, with a Jackson bass, but that doesn't hurt also. The neck uh, appears to be a little small for a five string, but I don't have really a problem with that. I did see a couple of basses for sale where the previous owners converted it into a four string. Even the guy uh, with whom I swapped basses uh, told me he had a problem playing uh, five strings. So he retuned the whole thing to E, A, D, G with a high B. However, I returned it back to the usual B, A, B, E, A, D, G. And about the neck uh, width, uh, I th thought that the neck was indeed smaller than, uh, for instance, my Warwick 5-string bass. Uh, but I measured it and it's exactly the same. But the, on the Warwick bass, you can adjust the string spacing on the bridge. There's a special mechanism where you can um, put them more together or, or not. This bass hasn't got that, so the string spacing on this bass is smaller than uh, on the Warwick. But, c'est la vie. Okay, well, that's it for this episode. If you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.